Okay, today we are looking at multiplicative comparison questions again, and we're going to be looking at how we can use models, illustrations, and writing to solve these types of questions. Before we begin, I listed four points that are going to be important for us to remember when we're thinking about multiplicative comparison questions. <clears throat> the first is that multiplicative comparison means you are comparing two things together that are going to be multiplied. Second, multiplicative comparison questions are usually written in word problems that have this format. Statement, statement, question. For example, Darlene picks seven apples. It ends in a period. That means it is a statement. Darlene picks seven apples is a statement because it ends in a period. So that checks off the first part of our format. Juan picked four times as many as Darlene. Another period, that's a statement. And how many apples did Juan pick? Ends in a question mark. So we followed the statement, statement, question format. Three, we use the two statements, these two here, to determine the number sentence or equation. Now an equation is just like a number sentence, but it includes letters. And yes, I did say letters. We're going to try that in one of our examples today. So our first example, Joelle read nine books in the fall. George read seven times as many books. How many books did George read? So I'm going to circle the important information that we need to know here. Joelle read nine books. George read seven times, that's telling me to multiply as many books than Joelle. So how many books did George read? So in this case, I'm going to use writing to help me. So my question is, how many books did George read? So books George read, that's what we need to find out. So we find that out by creating our number sentence. So it says George read seven times, so I'm going to write seven times as many books, and that's referring or comparing it to Joelle who read nine books. So that's telling me seven times nine is 63 books George read. That's one way we can solve this problem, okay? I'm going to erase, so if you need to pause, you may, to get down these notes. I'm going to erase and try a different strategy. I'm going to be trying an illustration. So I'm still going to keep my two numbers circled, 9 and 7, and I know times means to multiply. So Joelle has 9 books. I'm going to draw nine squares for my books. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now it says George read seven times as many books. So that means I would need all nine of these seven times. And I can use my illustration to help me. So I can repeat these seven times, which would give me a total, again, of 63 books. So depending on how you most feel comfortable, you can decide which strategy you would prefer for that first question. Second question is a little bit more challenging. So we'll see which strategy you prefer for number two. So I'm going to add in the question here because it was never listed. So I'm going to say 
Sarah is 12 years old. George is she years old. Sarah is three times as old as George. And we want to know how old is George? I'm going to start with the writing strategy again by rewriting what I know about the question that's been given. And today in class, some of you recognized that the word is means equal. So I'm going to use that to help me figure out how these words can be used in math. So Sarah equals 12 years old. George is, which we know means equals, equals G years old. So now I can see the two things that we're comparing. We're comparing George's age to Sarah's age. Sarah, so we have another fact about Sarah, which I'm going to write right next to it. So we have one fact. And now a second fact about Sarah. Sarah is, which means equals, is means equals, three times, I'm just using exactly what the words tell me, three times as old as George. Okay. And what do we know about George? We know that George is G years old. So three times G. Now, I'm still only seeing one number in this equation right now. So I need to look at the information I have and say, what can I plug in? So I'm looking and I see Sarah equals 12 years old. So I can replace Sarah's name with the number 12 because Sarah is or is equal to 12 years old. That means I can write 12 equals three times G. Now the G will give me how old George is. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So now we can solve this in a couple different ways. First, we can say 12 equals three times G. So in my mind, I'm thinking three times what gives me 12. So I can count my three multiples on my fingers. And I'm thinking 3, 6, 9, 12. That's my four multiple. So I know I can write 12 equals 3 times 4. And you can see everything lines up. 12, 12, equal, equal, 3, 3 times, times. So the G must equal 4. So that means the G we know stood for George's age. So George is 4 years old. And we can go back to our original information and see if we're right. So Sarah is 12 years old. George is G years old, which now we know is four. George is four years old. Sarah is three times as old as George, which means three times four equals Sarah's age, which is 12. Is that correct? Check. That is correct. So we know that we did it in the right way. So this is how we used writing to help us come up with the answer to this multiplicative comparison problem. We will try again tomorrow with models and illustrations to also help us solve these multiplicative comparison questions. Take your time and good luck.